All right. All right, guys. Well, you know, given the awesome talks at this conference, it seems that network states and startup cities are, are starting to get more momentum, and they're starting to get more real-world momentum. So we need to start talking about security. Uh, from Prospera to Praxis, you know, as, as these uh, projects go from the cloud to the land, security becomes a, a pretty big concern. So uh, I'm currently the, the co-founder of, of Spearbit. We're incubating Cantina, which is a, a marketplace for smart contract code review and, and penetration testing. Uh, previously, I was an officer in the United States Army for four years. So I was an artillery officer. Uh, and then I was pulled up to the Pentagon to be a product manager for a large cybersecurity organization. Uh, and I'm also an advisor to Think Tank in DC, uh, Foundation for American Innovation, which is a think tank uh, that actually has a, a charter city and startup city purview. OK, so let me set the stage. Uh, I think in, in the space, uh, you know, on crypto Twitter, there's been this idea floating in the air that uh, you know, network states are going to be fully sovereign. Right? Uh, governments are not going to be able to touch them. Uh, and the, these network states will be ideologically pure and, and removed from the international uh, legal system. Uh, so I went out and I interviewed a bunch of Startup City founders. And even going back uh, to the history of the Startup City movement, like Patrick Friedman's blog back in the, in the late 2000s, even then, uh, and it's been proven out now, uh, there's been this concept that maybe network states and maybe startup cities aren't going to be fully sovereign, right? That they're going to really work in conjunction with host nation governments. Uh, and that's what's, what's playing out, right? So, um, you know, sovereignty actually can be a burden. Uh, you know, having to sustain a military actually can be EV negative. Uh, it's not always uh, something you want. So maybe a more pragmatic lens is to, you know, offload some aspects of sovereignty to a, a larger government and then really focus on, on the user experience of your network state or, or startup city, you know, creating a safe environment for your citizens and, and your users. OK, so let's kind of go through the progression of the, of the security model here. So you know, I think the assumption in the room is that these network states are going to start in the cloud. right? You aggregate a community based on shared values. Uh, and then you're probably going to want to crowdfund something. So the advice there would be to use uh, secure, smart DAO contracts that have been audited by a reputable security firm. Uh, and then you're going to want to you know, speak and coordinate. So in that case, use you know, secure messaging like, like Signal and some other tools, because you know, free speech is important, right? I think we all support free speech here. Um, and there are some projects in, in the ecosystem. Shout out to uh, an Infinita VC that put this together. So Logos uh, is, a, is a blockchain that uh, is, is marketing itself to, to network states with a private messaging service. Uh, Urbit, uh, not necessarily marketed directly for, for network states, but potentially some, some use there with you know, decentralized messaging uh, and so on. And there's also Kali and LexDAO, which allow you to spin up uh, regulated uh, crowdfunding. OK, so I think everyone in the room is you know, relatively familiar with cybersecurity. Um, maybe the, the tech tribe isn't as familiar with the security model when we transition uh, from the cloud to land, right? Because it's cloud first, but not land never. So it's a different mentality here. Uh, once we, we go to, to land, after we've, we've crowdfunded a, a physical territory, um, the model shifts from one of abundance to one of protecting scarcity. Um, and again, there, there's no real need to have offensive military capability here. N none of the, the startup city founders I've talked to really want that. Uh, instead, it's more of a public safety lens to protect sites and protect the residents that are going to occupy these, these new developments. OK, so the question then becomes, can cryptography and can drones be the primary means of defense? It's a sexy idea, right? We can offload it all to, to robotics and to, to math. Uh, at least in 2023, the answer is that is a necessary but not sufficient way to defend any piece of territory around the world. So that, that photo, it's a pretty stark one. It's the, the border wall between Gaza and Israel. And the Israelis had the mentality uh, that they were going to become the startup nation and focus on cryptography through cybersecurity, uh, focus on drones, focus on robotics. You know, that there was a bunch of um, you know, robotic video cameras that were monitoring the wall. Uh, and they didn't have enough you know, troops to guard the wall. Uh, and uh, obviously, the attack uh, recently happened because of that. So some objections. 
uh, to this thesis that I have, and frankly, that's been proven out by a lot of the, the startup city founders I've talked to. One common one is, hey, you know, these, these network states are going to be secured by Bitcoin. Bitcoin is cloud first. Um, it may be cloud first, but there's still real world attack vectors. Uh, but the mines are physical. But even more pragmatically, uh, if you look at crowdfunding today, it's, it's with less uh, decentralized uh, you know, forms of, of crypto than, than Bitcoin. Yeah, it's more likely that network states are going to use USDC or USDT for, for daily operations that pay people to buy real estate and so on. Um, and then, you know, for the, the second objection, which is, uh, you know, information age uh, defense is disproportionate about cryptography, you know, the, the crypto field itself has always known about $5 wrench cryptanalysis, right? The, the rubber hose attack. So that, that's been a known threat vector. Um, and then some other objections to this thesis that, you know, we're in the age of AI and so on. I think Elon would probably disagree. That's why Neuralink exists, right, to help humans augment in the age of AI. But even before that, you know, militaries today are working on human machine teaming, which is, you know, having uh, human pilots in conjunction with drones because AI is good at certain things, humans are good at others. So again, I think that, that falls flat. And then finally, uh, the, the expression, you can't nuke the network, uh, but you can certainly assassinate the, the people that comprise it. Okay, so not to be a doomer, I think there's some positives here. And there's a lot of stuff for maybe founders in this room to build uh, that can help solve some of these problems. Um, so the, the founders I talked to that are building these, these startup cities were pretty unanimous. They're looking at kind of like a campus police model, right? Where similar to, you know, in, in America, you have universities uh, that have local police departments that prosecute major crimes. Uh, but then you do have campus police, which really are focused on like, you know, smaller order crimes on the college campus. So that's the model that uh, the, these founders of startup cities are going for. Um, and then you couple that with uh, public safety tech. So a great example is Flock, uh, Flock Technology, which is an American uh, startup that builds gunshot detectors and they build license plate readers. And just getting started, uh, there's a lot of opportunities for founders to build uh, better public safety tech to, to help out here. Um, network states and startup cities are also going to need misinformation defense, um, whether we like it or not. You know, the internet is a it's a it's a battlefield. I think again, these last two to three weeks have uh, have, have proven that out. Uh, the, the narrative uh, warfare is, is real, um, and, and it, it just is what it is. Um, so the overall takeaway here, uh, you know, first is with cybersecurity. Uh, so there's some books you can read about the history of, you know, zero days and all that good stuff. Nicole Perloff wrote a good book on that. You can hire Cantina, which is the, the marketplace that Spirit incubated. We got you covered for, for code review and for penetration testing. Um, and then again, like, as the tech drive starts to tease out what in-person developments look like, I think it's important to understand the culture of, of, of those folks that have had a, you know, a more scarce life. So maybe folks in the special operations community. Sean Ryan is a great example of that. He's a former Navy SEAL that yeah, interviews a bunch of special operations veterans. And I think it's, it's good for, for tech folks to understand that culture. Uh, and then, of course, um, the opportunity to hire campus police for these startup city developments in coordination with local governments, working underneath the international legal system. I think it's a win-win for everyone. Uh, and then finally, uh, with information war, John Robb's been blogging about kind of the, the tactics of information war for a while. Um, and you know, these, these new developments are going to have to hire uh, social media teams. OK, but the, the main takeaway is, and this is something that came up multiple times uh, as I was talking to, to founders in the space, we need more statesmen. So the skill set to run a B2B SaaS company, although it's great, and I'm not trying to downplay that, it's a great accomplishment, but that's a factory floor model. There's no precedent for this, at least in recent history. By this, I mean starting a new city or potentially even a new country. So the mentality of founders is going to be different. And it's going to take folks with some, uh, some gusto, maybe even some cojones. So, th so that's the, uh, the main takeaway. Um, but there's a lot of opportunity to build. So let's get after it. Thanks.